What's up everyone? If you're new to the channel today, my name is Blake and this is Y2K. Um, today we're going to talk about the car behind me, the 1992 Lamborghini Diablo, and we're going to talk about all the things that don't work on the car. Um, it's not as much as you would think for a car of this age, uh, but I figured it would be a nice video so you could get an idea of uh, what they found in the pre-purchase inspection when I bought the car and actually what's happened uh, you know, since I bought it. So let's take a look at the list. The automatic seat belt retractors. Um, the driver side one I think has been disconnected. The passenger side, it says that one doesn't work either, but from what I've seen it actually works intermittently and sometimes um, my wife will use it uh, when she's getting out of the car, but uh, we usually uh, notice that they just don't work at all. The interior and the truck lamps, uh, it says we're inoperable and they found two bulbs in the ashtray. I'm not sure where those bulbs are now, um, and I know they don't work, I don't think, right now, so I'm guessing they're not in there. Uh, I don't know, uh, I might have misplaced them or something, but I don't know where those are. This one was pretty hilarious. They drove my car for about five to 10 minutes uh, at the dealership when they were inspecting it and the TPMS light came on. Number one, how the heck does a 1992 Diablo have a TPMS sensor? That was like very wishful thinking that that would work for like, you know, years to come. Uh, number two, if you saw these sensors, I'll try and find a clip of them. They look like, uh, you know, like the brass knuckles you would put on your, uh, <laughs> on your hand. They're huge and they're zip tied on, which is like how an aftermarket one would be done today on like a different kind of wheel uh, if you, you know, put different wheels on your car um, that couldn't fit TPMS. So that was very interesting. We chose to disconnect those and um, the light hasn't come back on. So uh, I guess the car is happy without them. I'm not sure, but we definitely uh, didn't need to be spending a whopping $361 for a 1992 tire pressure sensor for Lamborghini Diablo. Um, during the inspection, they found that the passenger side window was very slow, aka stiff. Never heard a window called stiff before, but they called it stiff to roll down. Um, I had my guy in Atlanta who serviced the car when it came down. He actually took the door panel off and regreased it, and it actually seems to be working okay. So that has actually been uh, resolved. The clock in the dash um, doesn't work anymore. And, uh, you know, I'm probably not going to be fixing the clock. Um, they did not give me an estimate on the clock because I'm assuming they don't make them anymore. Maybe I could find one on eBay. Uh, if I find one, maybe I'll see how much it costs for a working clock for a Lamborghini Diablo. The reverse lamps, um, this still has not been fixed. The reverse lamps don't work. And um, usually, you know, I'm not, I try not to go to spots where I actually have to back the car out anyways because it's kind of hard to see out of. Um, not near as bad as a Countach because I drove one of those, um, but you know, it's still kind of tough. So uh, that one, yeah, the reverse lights, they definitely don't work, but um, I think it's probably an easy fix, so I need to look into that. My original Alpine stereo, yes, original Alpine with the original Alpine amp in the trunk, um, it turns on. And there used to be sound that would pulsate kind of like throughout the speakers and I could hear some reception. Um, that has since gone away and now it just turns on and you can press buttons. So uh, I'm hoping that's an easy fix. But I'm gonna once again assume that the stereo in this car probably isn't very good and um, the V12 sounds great so I'm not really in a hurry to fix that either. But sometime down the road I would like to definitely get that fixed just so I could have a working stereo. This particular issue is kind of important to me. The AC does not work in this car and it's probably been a heat index of over 100 degrees um, for several days now in Florida and it's gonna be you know that for the rest of the summer all the way probably through the end of September. Um, so when I drive this car all the windows are down and it's really hard to make videos with windows down because the audio is horrible so that's why you haven't seen a lot of uh, you know like in-car video of this thing. Um, but I hope to get that fixed. Um, it is R12, so I actually have to convert it to 134, um, which hopefully I can get a video of them doing that. The compressor is spinning, which hopefully means it's good, um, but uh, it could be bad. The, the, the guy that inspected it in Atlanta said he thinks it's just done, and I need a new compressor, but the second guy I had a look at it said that uh, it spins freely and um, he thinks we can just recharge it and it should be good to get starting time to diagnose at the dealership at lamborghini um, just to recharge it was 441 dollars the driver's side door strut 
is a little weak, um, but I actually have figured out a way to make it not really have any issues at all, so I'm not in a hurry to fix that. Um, if I start with it from the closed position and let it kind of slowly open and pressurize the gas strut, then it seems to stay up. So that one, I'm not really in a hurry. The uh, engine pop mechanism for the latch uh, on the hood, or uh, I guess it's called a hood, a uh, hatch on this car, um, is a little stiff, they said, and I've noticed that, but I don't know if that's really an issue. Um, it opens just fine, it's two pops to open it, and uh, you know, that's that's been uh, easy to use. I haven't had any issues. Um, the washer fluid for the uh, windshield is leaking and does not hold fluid, so uh, you know, I don't uh, really wash my windows a lot with the windshield wiper, there's only one. And I've gotten caught in the rain actually twice now, and um, I did an okay job, but not a great job. So I probably need to get the wiper replaced, but the fluid uh, reservoir itself uh, it has a big leak in it. So um, once again, probably something I'm not gonna fix, but it is broken. They quoted me $361 to uh, diagnose that. That was just the diagnosis. There's a little bit of oil seepage in the rear of the engine um, and some of the gaskets, that, which is you know completely normal um, for a car of this age. And they said it was, uh, at this point, nothing alarming and it does not burn oil. It doesn't burn a drop of oil. So uh, right now we're gonna leave that be. Uh, the left rear bumper lens they found was cracked, uh, which I've noticed. Uh, once again, not something I'm really in a hurry to fix, but uh, that is another item that they had on their list. The tires, uh, when I originally bought it, were dated 2000. Um, so I got new tires and that has been rectified, so the tires are good. The driver's side rear wheel and the passenger side front wheel have a little bit of curb damage according to this uh, report. It's very minor and uh, something I don't even really notice when I look at the car, uh, but nonetheless, that was uh, on the report. The front bumper has a pretty good amount of curb rash underneath where the front lip is from hitting curbs or rocks or whatever. Um, that is something I kind of want to address and do a clear bra on the car. Um, so that is something they found. Uh, apparently, the guy who had it, um, you know, the past couple owners, uh, drove it a lot. And uh, so, you know, there's some rock chips under the uh, front bumper there. The passenger side right rear bumper, quarter panel, and rocker panel um, have been touched up with paint. I'm going to assume that's because of rocks flying up from these giant tires. Um, so I'm guessing that's what that's for. The Carfax was clean on the accident side. So uh, that was something to note on the inspection as well. So that's all they found on the actual inspection itself. Um, I've got it you know, right here. The things that had happened after I bought it were, I added a quart of oil, uh, but I actually had all the fluids completely, like coolant brakes, oil for the engine, transmission oil, I had all that done in Atlanta, and that was about 1400 bucks for a fluid flush, which is actually a lot cheaper than the 4000 I was quoted at an independent shop in Detroit before I shipped it down. Um, what has broken since then is the O2 sensor on the right bank went out, and, um, so we replaced that, I think it was like $150 for the Bosch O2 sensor. Um, and I got like, I got one OEM Lamborghini one, actually I got two, used one, and I've got two more Bosch backups. Um, and then I also uh, had the battery replaced, which is an interstate battery. And uh, you have to take the left driver side tire off and the rear and then jack the car up and swap it out that way. Uh, it's actually the same way you do it in a Dodge Viper, uh, which is kind of funny because, uh, as I said before in an earlier video, Lamborghini actually assisted with the design of the, uh, the Viper engine, and I wonder if they assisted with that design as well. <laughs> okay guys, I wanted to add one last thing into this video. So when I turn the blinker on, the temp gauge actually moves with the blinker. This is apparently a very common thing with Diablos because uh, the grounds for the gauges have issues sometimes. Um, I just think it's kind of funny. Anyways, that's the last little thing. It does say the clutch was replaced twice within the past 17,000 miles, and actually uh, it was most recently done within the last 1,000 miles um, from when I bought the car, so that is fresh. The brakes have been redone as well. 
um, and a lot of the maintenance was kept up to date in a really nice binder um, that I'll show you a clip of here. Um, very thorough documentation, so uh, the people who uh, did own it before me did a really good job taking care of it. That is uh, all the things wrong with my car currently. Um, you know, I knew all this when I went into it, and uh, I was actually very happy with the amount of uh, small issues it had. Um, and, you know, I just kind of sealed the deal on me wanting to buy it uh, when I was there in Detroit. But I uh, hope you guys had a, a good time watching today's video. If you like what you saw, be sure to give us a big thumbs up and like the uh, video. And please do subscribe if you're new and just stopping in to check out the content. Um, I try to upload every Tuesday and Friday. So uh, we'll see you guys next video. And until then, stay fly.